Welcome to Dale Carnegie Training. My name is Greg Story. I'm the president of Dale Carnegie Training here in Tokyo, Japan. And today I'm having a conversation with our head of training for Japan, Mr. Shuhei Yasuda. Yasuda-san, thank Hello. you very much. I know you're a very busy man with all the training <laughs> duties you have, but let's uh, talk a little bit about your professional background. You know, you've joined the company, Dale Carnegie, as head of right. training. Right. So what have you been doing previously in your career? Sure, thank you. Yes, uh, my, my main background is a hotel business. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's been almost a, uh, 15 years mm -hmm. in the working in a hotel and a, uh, in hos hospitality background, mm -hmm. hospitality industries. So once I graduated from the university, I joined the Japanese hotel chain. So I worked in a hotel in Osaka, Tokyo, and also the three years and a half in Bali, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time that I was a manager, working as a manager role. Mm -hmm. And then after uh, working back from Bali, and I always, actually, I had always the interest in a nonprofit organization, in the nonprofit sector. And I found one of the NGO in Cambodia, they providing the hospitality training to those who are uh, underprivileged, the young adults in Cambodia. And they provide the training, the hospitality training, as well as a life skills training, so that the, once the students graduated from the training school, they are more independent and also working as a, a professional hotel person. And then I thought that, the, hey, this is a place that the, I can use, use my expertise from the hospitality background, also want to give such a social impact. So then I actually quit the company and I flew, to uh, Cambodia and working as a volunteer for one year at the time in Cambodia. And that was actually the time that the, I kind of devote myself for the training area. And then once I stayed there for one year, then I started to think uh, coming back to Japan because of the family issues. Then I was looking for the place that the, I can work as a training area or maybe learning and development area. And I found there's a one hotel in Osaka that looking for the training manager. So I applied, so I went through and I joined the company. The, the hotel was a international hotel chain, the global hotel chain and the five star hotels. So that was great. Uh, that was my first, top, first uh, career as a training manager. Then I moved to, uh, then I changed to the HR manager, uh, changing a role. So I just overview more, not only the training area, but also human relationship area. Then I noticed that the, okay, actually I really enjoy my training part, that that was my passions. I love to see people changing. Then I start thinking, I wanna see a more, uh, more different uh, industries, different companies uh, through the training. So then I was looking for the, the career that I can use my training background, but also the chance to see more variety of the companies, variety of the industries. And then I found this Dale Carnegie training, Tokyo, Japan. So, yes, yeah, so son, you had mm. that experience in uh, Cambodia, yep. then back in Japan, mm. five-star hotel, being responsible for the training. You got the bug, the passion for training, for helping people. So, you know, you've, you've come from outside of Dale Carnegie mm -hmm. as an experienced trainer into our organization. When you joined, what did you notice for some of the differences with the, the way you'd been mm -hmm. taught to teach or the way you've been taught to train people and the way that Dale Carnegie does it? Yeah, there's a certain differences. And then the before in the hotel, uh, in the hotel business, my role was more towards like a, a lecture-based mm -hmm. training and also just providing the knowledge so then the people will understand the knowledge, content, and we expect them to change uh, in the behavior most of the time. This is probably more similar to a university style of delivery, a lecture. I would say yes. And study and write it all down type of thing. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Because we need to show uh, the result to their own managers or to, to the headquarters. So I need to have something uh, fixed. So then I, okay, I've done the training hours for each person, or okay, at least two hours a month. You know, there needs to be something fixed and obvious. So it's not about them, but it's about how many hour training hours we've done okay. in the other organizations. Right. Right. And then mostly it's about the, uh, the behavior change that the, we, won't ex we expect them to change the way they act. 
While when I joined this Dale Carnegie uh, training, then what I noticed very interesting is that the, of course we, our aim is changing a behavior, behavior change, and that leads to the performance change as an outcome. But at the same time, we start with the emotions, mm -hmm. and emotion also leads to the attitude. Mm -hmm. So our Dale Carnegie training's focus is start with the emotional change, why they need to change, why they want to change, mm -hmm. why they can change. Mm -hmm. Then comes with the knowledge, mm -hmm. then that has the emotional change plus behavioral change and that leads to the performance change mm -hmm. which the company or co corporate expect them to have. Mm -hmm. So we always approach them, why they need this? Why do you need this skill? Mm -hmm. Why do you need this outcome? Mm -hmm. So then they are actually eager to learn Mm -hmm. Yes, I need this. So I want this knowledge. Mm -hmm. I want this practice. Mm -hmm. So once they change the emotional, it's very also exciting moment that from the trainer point of view, we see, we clearly see that they change their emotions during the training. Mm -hmm. They sparkle their eyes like, mm -hmm. I need these skills. Mm -hmm. And that's the time they leverage the, the learning opportunities mm -hmm. from our training. Mm -hmm. So that's a big difference. So, you know, one of the things you talk about change, as we know, uh, getting people to change is not that easy. Not easy so, at all. you know, you were trying to get people to change before mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. uh, previous mm -hmm. training methodology of mm -hmm. lecture and, you know, making sure all the hours are completed. What did you notice about in Dale Carnegie? How does Dale Carnegie go about getting people to change? Yes, definitely. First of all, we clarify what's the skill, what's the outset that they want. Mm -hmm. Because without the clear visions, it's really hard what they are aiming for. Mm -hmm. So most of the training that we set the visions, what you are aiming for. It's mm -hmm. very clearly mm -hmm. the vision that uh, you can clearly image of, mm -hmm. can really see it. That's one thing. And also, yes, you are right that the, it's very hard for all the people to tackle the things that the, you are not really familiar with or you are you feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. that we call it, a, you need to expand from the comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are here as a trainer. We are here to encourage them. We are here to uh, coach them, kind of supporting, mm -hmm. but not too much supporting them because they have to run by themselves. But we kind of assist them mm -hmm. and lots of encouraging. Yes, you can do this. You won't do this. You need these skills, mm -hmm. encouraging. And also the coaching, sometimes they feel uncomfortable the way we coach, but that's that actually uh, uh, the reason we make them feel uncomfortable. So it means that we stretch them. Mm -hmm. And we widen the, for example, in terms of the communication uh, training, mm -hmm. we stretch them to have a variety, the wide variety of the way to communicate. Mm -hmm. So we, that's how we, as a trainer, uh, engage them, so themselves and our our trainer mm -hmm. as a supporter. Yes, they are gradually changing by themselves. Mm -hmm. So I guess what you're talking about there is the comfort zone. You know, yeah. you tend to get into habits. You habits. Get you uh, are capable in a certain number of things you do, mm -hmm. but to grow, you have to increase the number of things you can do, the scale of it, maybe the, the breadth of it, mm -hmm. which means there's some discomfort in doing something new that you're not mm -hmm. perfect at. Mm -hmm. So what you're talking about is the training is helping you to move from what you're good at mm -hmm. to be able to do additional things mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. over time gradually become good at them. Even though the initial movement, change, it feels a bit uncomfortable. Maybe, uncomfortable. Right? Yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So how do you become a Dale Carnegie trainer? What's involved in becoming a Dale Carnegie trainer? Definitely. It's not an easy process, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, first of all, you have to take our, our Dale Carnegie course. Mm -hmm. And our Dale Carnegie course is one of the, our core course, one of the core course, but also it's a foundation course mm -hmm. to know about the Dale Carnegie, what the Dale Carnegie training is about. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a participant of the training. So mm -hmm. I, take, I took that. How and long does that last? Uh, it, I took a 12 weeks course. Mm -hmm. So it takes up, I took about a three months, three mm -hmm. to four months. Mm -hmm. yes. This is the main modules, yeah? Main modules, okay. yes. Right. And right. then, so you do and that, then, so you spend three months in right. the program as a participant. Okay, then what happens? And then you join also another, co uh, you join the same, the Dale Carnegie course, but this time you join as a coach mm -hmm. or slash graduate. Right. The coach is the one that the support, it's a supporter uh, supporting the uh, trainer, 
but also it's very close to the participant side. So mm -hmm. it's kind of bridge between the mm -hmm. trainer and mm -hmm. the participant side. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a coach at least a twice. Mm -hmm. So now we're up to another now, six three months. plus three is six. We're now at nine months. Nine months, yes. We're now at nine months, yeah. yeah. We haven't done any, <laughs> any train the trainer yet, so we're at nine oh. months. So then what happens? Yes, so once you join, uh, when you join as a coach, then you start you start seeing the training from a little bit from the trainer point of view, mm -hmm. but still you have some uh, participant view though. Then uh, there, uh, we will have a certification process and we call it a pre-DNA and also the DNA process. Mm -hmm. The pre-DNA takes an uh, entire week mm -hmm. and they also DNA also takes uh, one week. And this process has, uh, is conducted and sorry, uh, this course is delivered by the, our master trainer mm -hmm. or Carnegie master trainers. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the anybody can train the new trainers, but mm -hmm. the, with a certain level of the trainer, only they have the privilege mm -hmm. to train and also assess the candidates of the trainers. Mm -hmm. So that's how the Dale Carnegie's network, the training, uh, make the quality mm -hmm. of the being a trainer. Mm -hmm. So you've got, uh, you've, got to, you've got to pass the pre-DNA yes. first, and if you pass that, then you can go into the DNA. Next, right? DNA. So you, right. you pass both, then what happens? Yes. And actually, that, uh, even the one week uh, pre-DNA DNA course, you need a uh, lot of pre uh, preparations. Mm -hmm. So not just only one week, but you have to prepare mm -hmm. a couple weeks before mm -hmm. ahead. Mm -hmm. So it takes actually longer than that. Mm -hmm. After the DNA, yes, uh, you have to have uh, two times tandem, mm -hmm. as a, a tandem training. Mm -hmm. It means that the uh, two of you will mm -hmm. actually deliver the course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just uh, maybe one, you will take care of the half of the module. Right, yeah. And you actually deliver the course, which takes another three or two, four months. So we're now, we're now at 12 months, 15 months, by the time we get through two tandem. So two tandem. that's 15 months, then what happens? Then it's a time that the, you should be uh, certified uh, officially. Then you are uh, allowed to do your solo delivery. First solo, yeah. First solo, as a Dale Carnegie trainer. Right, so the whole thing is 18 months, basically. Fair to all at least. Together, right? <laughs> at least, at least, yeah. That's presuming it all goes in, <laughs> the timing works like that. So you've mentioned uh, this long period of yeah. time as train the trainer, mm. and a pre-DNA, DNA, you're certified, you're starting to go through your tandems, uh, you go solo. Then that's just one course, mm -hmm. that's a Dale County course. But uh, what other programs do you have in the curriculum and how long does it take to become a trainer with those? Well, thank you. Yes, definitely. Uh, yes, we have a sales training. Mm -hmm. We call it a winning with relationship selling. Mm -hmm. And also we have a, a presentation training. Mm -hmm. It's called a high impact presentations. Mm -hmm. And also the leadership training. Mm -hmm. So in these courses, the same as the Dale Carnegie, Dale Carnegie course, we have to take that course as a participants. Mm -hmm. And we see what's the objective, what's the quality of the training. Mm -hmm. And after that, again, there is a... Uh, Training trainer certification process, which normally takes a one week, mm -hmm. takes a one week's uh, training, and then trained by the Carnegie Master, or Carnegie, uh, Carnegie Master, or Master Trainers. Mm -hmm. After that, again, you have to take a two times tandems, mm -hmm. two times times. Then you do by yourself as a solo. Mm -hmm. And for example, for the uh, sales sales training, it consists of the seven modules, mm -hmm. and it takes yes at least seven weeks. Mm -hmm. So as a participant, it takes about a two months mm -hmm. to take that course, mm -hmm. then the one week certification process, mm -hmm. and then two times tandem. Mm -hmm. So again, it takes a year, yeah. right? Close to a year. Close yeah. to a year yeah. to be a solo certified trainer. So for each of those programs. For each, like that, yes. Yeah. So as the training manager, mm -hmm. what's your role here at Dale Carnegie? Yes, first of all, as a training manager, I'm expected to deliver the high quality training. I have to be a role model, and both to the corporate training and also to the public training. So definitely I do, I do deliver the training. But at the same time, one of my responsibility is to control the quality of the trainer and the tra training. We have a guest satisfaction, guest satisfaction survey, we call it the voice of customers. So we monitor the score of the voice of customers and if they need more coaching, if the trainer needs more coaching or some support, then definitely I'll be the one to support them. And for those, uh, for the new trainers, definitely I need, we need to develop the new trainers. That's one of my 
responsibility. And recently, because of this COVID-19 situations, we launched the, we emphasize the live online, the online training. Mm -hmm. And some trainers are not familiar with the online training because before it was only the in-person training. Yep. So I, as a training manager, have to monitor and also guarantee the quality of the face-to-face -face training and also live online, online training. Mm. And uh, I guess also uh, you're doing refresher training or active you're training. doing active training throughout the year for trainer quality, like coaching the trainers? How does that work? Thank you, yes. So to maintain the quality of a training, so we have at least a yearly trainer refresher and also, as a ISO standard, we have every three years, we have a recertification process, recertifications. So we invite the Carnegie uh, master mm -hmm. from overseas to make, and then have a refreshment mm -hmm. and also assess, uh, uh, reassess our tra trainers. Mm -hmm. And not only that uh, year annual uh, refresher or recertificate process, but also we have a consistent uh, coaching session with existing trainers. So with that, we communicate quite uh, consistently and checking our quality of the training. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Dale Cunningham is in 100 countries around the world. Yeah. So for multinational companies, and many Japanese companies today are multinational, but also foreign-based multinational companies, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what's the benefit to them to be using Dale Carnegie wherever they are around the world? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just explained, I explained a little bit about our standard of the training, uh, how to maintain the quality of the trainers. That's, and you know, it took uh, one year and a half at least to, get, to become a new trainers. And that's valid for all the countries, all the offices of, all over the world. Mm -hmm. So that the, if you're the country has uh, several branches in the different countries, but if you take the, the training from the Dale Carnegie training, your quality is guaranteed. It maintains the quality of the trainers so, and then we, because of this uh, variety of the offices, we deliver our training more than 30 languages. Mm -hmm. So if you are based in China, you can take, uh, of course, the same contents in Chinese, but if you have an expat, Japanese expat living in China, they can also take the Japanese course using our online training. Mm -hmm. So the, the language is different, but the quality remains the same. So that's so, a big uh, benefit. That's a big deal, isn't it? Because for I know myself in training I've received in the past, mm. same organization, but the variety of, of quality of the delivery between trainers can really be a major difference. Mm. And trying to have consistency mm -hmm. in the quality is not an easy thing to do, but you know, obviously, with all of the training that's going on for the train the trainer, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about what's the culture like of Dale Carnegie training here in Japan? I mean, compare that with maybe the culture in other organizations where you've worked. What's different? What's the difference between somewhere else? Yes. So the thing that I was quite surprised and inspiring is that the, every day we have a morning briefing mm -hmm. and at the time we keep saying our visions mm -hmm. and the missions mm -hmm. and the values. Mm -hmm. And our vision that is, let, let me talk about our visions, this training in Japan, is the most enrichment organization changing our world one person at a time. That's a vision that we keep saying to ourselves. So then we know what we are aiming for. It's not about the, okay, we have to hit this target, hit these numbers, but we are changing our world one person right in front of you. Mm -hmm. That's our training company's value, um, visions. Therefore, it's very clear that the old employees understands why we are here, why mm. we are working for it. Mm. And then that's, I don't really feel it from my past experience. Yes, there was a vision, a missions, or other like a company's policies, mm. but we don't really see it every day. Mm. But here in this company, we see it every single morning. And we talk about why we are here, because we are here to mm. impact and make people change and make this society change. And that's what I love this company. And then the, all the employees are proud of their visions. Mm. Well, one thing, you know, the Dale Carnegie organization is based around the principles mm -hmm. that Dale Carnegie came up with. You know, his famous book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And there are 30 human relations principles mm -hmm. and 30 stress management principles, which are the core. So what have you found? I mean, you're teaching these principles mm -hmm. to other companies. Mm -hmm. Is there a consistency 
between how the company operates internally itself using those principles with what they're teaching outside. Exactly, yes. And then, yes, we are teaching the principles and then the participants are learning. But for us, it's not just a teaching, but we are living it. Mm -hmm. We are living with the, part, uh, with the principles. Mm -hmm. And that's why also in the morning briefing, we mention, uh, we pick up one principle mm -hmm. from the 30s principles. And then we talk about, the individual talk about how we apply these principles mm -hmm. and what these principles make us change in mm -hmm. our lives. Mm -hmm. So we are living it, using it, so then we have more credibility whenever we talk to the participants that, the, mm -hmm. yes, this principle is very useful because I know how it works. Mm -hmm. So that comes from our side. So not mm -hmm. just only we are teaching it, but we are living it. So listening to all this, mm -hmm. if, if mm -hmm. someone listening to this is thinking, okay, uh, we need to select a training company, what are some of the things they should be thinking about in making that selection? Mm -hmm. Obviously, the training quality is number one, mm -hmm. right? The, the company, uh, the clients want to have a very high quality of the training and also the consistency. Because, you know, they keep sending their participants even to the same course, but with the different trainers and the different quality of the training, then the outcome varies. That makes, you know, companies very uh, trouble. So then quality, and also consistency is really the key in which we can support of that because of this international standard. Mm. But I have to say that the passion to help, passion to support is one of the core of the trainers because once again, the people are afraid to get out of the comfort zone. Mm -hmm. They can't really do by themselves, but the trainer needs to help them so it's not about the procedure, it's not about the standard, but again, sometimes the trainer needs to out of the standard, but just for the participant to help them. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, that passion needs to be in the trainers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, very good. Thank you very much, Yasu-san. That's a very clear explanation. So please keep watching our videos on Tokyo Japan Dalkani TV, where we talk about a broad range of subjects around leadership, sales, presentation skills, and communication. We've got over 1,500 videos on that channel. It's all free. And you'll find lots and lots of good content in there to help you to further transform your career and your business.